What's up everyone, it's Bizless here and welcome to my channel which is all about making music and getting really good at it. Today we're going to be talking about automation in Ableton. We'll be covering what automation is, how to create automation, how to work with it and which parameters can be automated and at the end I'm going to show you some really useful tips and tricks. I know that most of the beginner producers make one crucial mistake while automating and I was guilty of doing that as well. So stick with me till the end and I'm gonna show you what that mistake is and how to avoid it. But first, what automation actually is? When we read from the Ableton's manual, automation is a movement of a control during song timeline or a session clip. Okay, but now in human, well, automation is basically changing some kind of parameter, let's say volume of an instrument over time, so if you want one instrument to start quiet and gradually increase in volume, we can do that thanks to automation. And of course, if you want Ableton to do this automatically, because we have some other interesting things to do, like drinking coffee. But for real, why would we need automation even? Why is it needed for? Well, automation makes your song interesting, so you can make one instrument change in timbre or change the tone during the song timeline. So we will begin with one type of instrument and it slightly changes or we can add some effects like a vibrato or a chorus or something or echo reverb. We can modify this during the time so to make our song more interesting. And also while mixing, let's say one instrument is more important at this moment, but in the other moment it's not that important so we can duck the volume a little bit. So that's what automation is really useful for. Okay, so now let's jump into the Ableton and then see how things are done. Come on. Okay, so how to get started. Ideally, we want to be in the arrangement view. So let's switch to the arrangement view here. So this is our little beat. So first, how to see automation lanes? Where can we actually start? So there is that little button here. When you press here, the display slightly changes. So now we have these red dashed lines and well, nothing else basically. We have these little things here that appeared as well. The also, there's another way to turn on the automation. You can press A on your keyboard, although make sure you have this keyboard switched off because otherwise it won't work. So this is the keyboard that if you want to play with your actual computer keyboard, you can play notes with it like so. You have to switch it off because the A button is actually now a C note. So let's switch it off, press A again. Now we are in the automation mode. Okay, so let's listen to what I've created and this beat goes like that. So what I've noticed that these little ARPs, these little ARPs keys are going in too hard. So I want them to start gradually. So from the really low volume all the way to up while the chorus kind of chorus starts. So how to create the automation. So we have to click here first on the track mixer, the track volume, and then we can click the mouse on the red line to create a note. So that's how we see it's a note created. We have to create another one here and then we can move this one down to minus infinite decibels. And now when you listen to this, it's gonna gradually increase in volume. Let's have a look. Okay, it's working. Right, we've created our first automation, which was very, very simple. Okay, now. What are the other ways to create automation? So we, for example, created a node, use our mouse to this, but we can also use a pencil. And if we want to paint on it a little bit like so, we can use a pencil to do that as well. Although now we see that this automation is made of like the steps, not like a fluent line. So we want to maybe get rid of that and we stick to this. Okay, but also if you want to create this line a little bit more interesting, we can of course do some changes to it. So we can press and hold the option or alt button on your keyboard just to make this line like so. So it grows exponentially now or the other way around like so and we can leave it like that. Perfect. Okay, but let's play with the panning now. So we can just click on the panning here and we have another line of automation and it's now in center, but we want to make it flying from one ear to another ear. So let's do that. So we have to uh, 
select some kind of some part of music then let's say we can right click and at the bottom we have insert shape so we have some predefined shapes of automation actually so we can use the sine wave shape and now we see that the sound is going to go to the right ear first and then to the left speaker and we can listen to that now okay that's working fine that's another way how to create automations we can of course right click on it and press clear envelope or use Control delete or command delete okay so there's another way of creating automation and we can actually use our midi keyboard okay so now let's map the frequency of auto filter to one of the knobs here so we go to a midi we just press which parameter we want to modify so let it be the frequency and then we twist the knob switch off the MIDI okay so now it was very simple okay now so we want to record it while we play so what do we have to do in order to accomplish that first we want to make sure this automation is armed so that's this button we have to have it on and then we want to switch off the track arm button because we don't want to overdub or record new notes on it we just want to record automation only okay so let's go to the beginning and let's press record and let's see what we can do So we can see all the automation recorded here and it's moving the filter automatically magic okay perfect okay so now let's do some work with the automation so we see that shape is a little bit complicated so if we'd like to change some kind of parameters here like we can change it all of course but if we want to pick one note and change it's going to change just a tiny bit and it's not going to allow us to do appropriate changes so we want to simplify that shape a little bit so we have to select the part of the clip that we want and then we right click and choose simplify envelope and that creates much less of the notes so it's easier to modify it now like that we have just less notes much easier okay so what if you want to copy the clip with the automation in it so we have to select everything including the top bar we just press Control c or command c like so and we want to paste it at the end let's say here we paste it as we see here it's including the automation but what if we want to copy only the automation that's easy we will select just the bottom part so it highlights blue like here then we just copy it and we can apply it to even a different instrument so we just have to highlight it like so and paste it so it pastes it as a different instrument without changing the notes we see the notes are the same so what if i want to copy this kind of clip without the automation we have to press this automation lock here so it's going to lock the envelope and then we will we can just highlight it as it is so and then press copy and then we can paste just the notes without the automation very simple as well then we want to make sure we uncheck that lock here so now if we want to let's say change some kind of envelope here and we want to be very particular about the amounts that we want to create because we see we have like 141 and 153 but we want to go somewhere in between i want to have an exact two and a half kilohertz what can i do i can right click and add value and i can type in 2500 that's going to be exactly 2500 that's sometimes useful maybe not in the hertz like that but in volume sometimes like the decimal point can make a really big difference so it's a very handy thing to know while you're creating automations now let's say we've created this little frequency shape and then we want to try something else so we want to change that frequency and listen to how it sounds when it changed and what happened now once i just move this parameter it grayed out all the automations so it means that the automation is not active and it's not going to work at the moment if we press the play button from here it's going to keep just this value i can then modify it but it's it's not working with the automation so let's say we tried this option and we want to have it working as it was before so we can press this little arrow here which will allow us to go back to the automation mode 
because we've been just overriding it with our own manual settings. Okay, but now if we want to automate two things at the same time, let's say we are automating here the volume and we are automating this and we want to see both of them at the same screen. So we want to make sure what's happening at what point we want to adjust thing or synchronize thing properly. So then we will just right click on the parameter that is automated like here and press show automation in new lane. And then we can change one of them, for example, to the frequency. So we have the frequency here and the volume here. Very simple. We can, of course, use these plus and minus to change. This is none. We can drop down from the list and we'll see the red dots. What is being automated? Like auto filter. Let's go here. But now we have this now mixer, track volume. We can, of course, also show only automated parameters. So we can choose between these two only, which makes it easier to choose from the list. Okay, so if you're enjoying this video and if you find these information is useful, smash the like button and subscribe to my channel. That helps a lot. And of course, you will not miss out on any of my future videos. And you can then, of course, go to my videos and rewatch whatever I've done in the past. I'm sure you're going to find something useful for yourself. Now let's go back to the automation. Okay, so now let's see which parameters can be automated. Basically, almost everything can be automated in Ableton. So starting from the track volume, panning, we can automate sense, we can modify some effects or parameters in the effects. We can even modify some parameters that are inside a third party plugins like the pigments here, let's say. So let's use this drop down. Sometimes we have some pre-configured uh, parameters to modify, but we just press configure and we will just press, let's say, dry wet on the distortion. So we press this button here. We can also use dry wet, of course. And then if we switch it off, we have these two parameters already in here. So we can switch off the configure. And then if we press on one of the parameters here, it's going to show like the automation one, or we can just right click, show automation new lane and add another lane of dry wet FX A2. And then we can use FX A1 dry wet, and we can then create automation to add a little bit of distortion and add a little bit of the chorus and we can play that. Okay, interesting. Okay, perfect. What else can be automated? We can automate on and off of the effect. So if you press here, it's gonna show us the automation. So we have the automation on, let's hide this. We don't need them at the moment. So we can press here and let's say the auto filter will turn on or turn off at some point. Let's say it's gonna turn on just very late like here. So we see it's switched off now. And now it's on magically. So we of course see this little red dots here and they mean that these parameters are automated. So if we switch it off, it's gonna override our automation. We can of course go back clicking this arrow. So we have that. Uh, exercise done. Perfect. And one more thing that comes to my mind, obviously you can automate basic everything you can think of. As I showed you, it's either so simple like this and it's going to show a new automation lane or you can configure if it's a third party plugin, but also you can automate tempo of the track. So the track will start slow and go faster during the track. So let's do this now. Let's right click on the tempo and press show automation in new lane. And that's an automation here on the master. We see the tempo and then we want to, let's say, click on it here. So let's start, now let's end up on 100 BPM and let's start with 70 BPM and let's see how it sounds like. And it speeds up. Okay, that's interesting. Let's go back. Okay, so now what else can you keep in mind? Recently, I've been really struggling with one thing. I couldn't turn on the comping. The comping is basically if you record a couple takes of something on the loop and you want to pick the best one. And I couldn't click on show take lanes. Okay, so now I have a little piece of the music recorded in the comping mode. So I have a couple of takes, but I can't see them. I can see only the last take I've recorded and I cannot see more of the takes and I can't right click and press show take lanes. It doesn't show even here. I cannot do anything. But why is this happening? It's because of the automation. So what we can do now is we have to switch off the automation mode by pressing A or this little button. And now when we right click, we see show take lanes. And then I can of course 
pick which take I want to use. I'll start from this beginning of this and the end of the other clip. That's why it's for. So that's one thing to keep in mind while working with automation. Okay, so I promised to tell you about that one mistake that many beginner producers makes, including me doing that in the past and how to avoid it. So if we're doing automation and we have it here, we should never automate these things here like track volume or panning. More important track volume, panning I'll show you later because it looks nice and is very easy to do. But then if you're in the mixing state, we can go here and then we want to adjust the volume of the tracks. We're going to override the automation. And each time we want to adjust it a tiny bit, if you want to make drums a little bit louder, or if you want to make uh, the arps a little bit more quiet or something, then we will each time override the automation. And when we go back, when we press this button, it's going to delete our settings back again. So what we want to do in that instance, we want to clear that automation. So we press right button, delete automation. And we want to do this using the utility. So we go to audio effects, utilities, and there's a utility at the end. And this one has a gain knob. So if we press this gain here, we can do exactly the same. So we start here, we go here like so, and then we can press option and alt to gradually increase the volume. And that's going to automate our gain in utility. We can, of course, then switch it off or switch it on. And now when we play with the volume of this here, we can mix our music much easier without pulling our hair out. Okay, that was easy. And also the utility has a balance so we can pan things here instead of on the mixer here, which is, I guess, way easier here. And then you can always change it and always switch it off and use another utility and use different type of automation just to compare. So think of that, always use the utility at the end. And of course, as you see, the automation is not really that difficult and you can automate whatever you like. It's all up to your imagination. So get going, start creating, and you can share with me some nice creative ideas. If you did some crazy automations, share them with me in the comments down below. And you've probably noticed that I kind of like coffee. So if you want to help this channel to grow and support it a little bit, you can buy me coffee. There's a link in the description down below. And I would really appreciate that. If you're a beginner in Ableton Live, you might want to think about improving your workflow a little bit. So I've recorded a video about seven most useful shortcuts in Ableton, and you really want to see that video to make your life much easier in Ableton. And also you can check the links in the description box down below for the gear I used and I would 100% recommend. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And that's it from me for today. Thanks so much for watching. See you guys in the next video. Cheers.